afraid to tell you that basically uh, nothing's working. So I have pretty well cocked up my entire streaming experience. So uh, today you get what you get. Um, and then I get to spend my entire evening trying to fix this. Um, so I apologize if everything's all cocked up. You should be able to see now we have a new stream name. Uh, we are a rack attack. We always were. Um, the old name was hard to, to pronounce, so I changed it just a little bit to make it more pronounceable, more rememberable, more typeable, and it broke everything. So, um, my stream deck isn't working. My, uh, my OBS wasn't working. Um, I've, I've got basically just just the very basics are working. Uh, hopefully you won't see a whole lot of difference, but there are things that I could do before that I can't do now. So, um, for instance, when I'm putting in my information and everything, I will not be able to see chat at all. So uh, I will try to get through that just as quickly as I possibly can. However, obviously, won't be able to do anything about it uh, during that time. Um, also, changing scenes and everything is going to take me a little more time than usual, so I apologize if uh, things get slow. But there's absolutely nothing I can do about it right at this moment. Uh, I've got to figure out why all my devices... Uh, I mean, I've even re-logged myself on every device and it doesn't work, so... We're gonna do the best we can and just suffer through it today. Uh, hopefully we'll figure it out before tomorrow's stream, otherwise tomorrow's stream may be canceled while I try to find solutions. All right, so let's get this thing started, shall we? We are going from uh, Quebec City to Montreal right now, and then we will later be going from Montreal to Ottawa. Assuming we have time, given the fact that I cocked up everything today, we're gonna get this thing turned on. Battery one and two, ground control, and external power is on. Fuel pumps all off, and now we need to load our fuel. This is the part where I can't see anything you guys say because I am in another window. I am not able to see anything because my other devices can't connect at all. 46.49, we're gonna go ahead and do 44.7 tons. Uh, let's go ahead and do our loading. We're going to have 143 passengers today. That's almost our maximum load. And then 1.3 tons of cargo. Alright. Pop that down again and be able to see you guys there for just a minute. Ooh, ooh, no, 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 we do not want that. Okay. Uh, if you fire test. All right, sounds good. If you master switch on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Start it now set up our lighting here. Upper and lower ecam. Dial up our mid fuse. Oh, this head bob is killing me! I can't even figure out how to turn it off. I've tried. Uh, and I, here's the thing. I want the head bob on average. I do not want it when I'm trying to scroll things. It goes very badly. Okay. Cockpit lights and mcdews are adjusted. Uh, flap lever match ecam. That should be at zero. Um, speed brakes retracted. Program window heat auto. APU bleed on when available, which it is. Air conditioning control panel, no white. Um, Cross bleed set to auto. Air conditioner temperature, we're not going to worry about it. We will need normal pack flow today. Actually, end up might be a little, 
a little uh, humid, so we're going to turn the pack flow up to high. And generator 1 and 2 fault light check on, external power off, and all other lights off, ventilation panel, all lights off. Preliminary pre-flight procedures complete. Starting pre-flight procedures, we need to get our uh, adheres aligning. Strobe light to auto. Wing light on. Navin logo system one. Seat belts auto and emergency lights on. Ooh. Landing elevation set automatic. Uh, pack flow should be high because I think it's humid in the area most likely today. Fuel pumps all on. Fire test, engine one and engine two. Passed. Passed. Then we have radios three, two, and one. And now we get to configure our mix. <clears throat> the first thing we're gonna need is both mix twos. And we're gonna go to our GPS monitor on this one, and then we are going to go to initialization here. From CYQB to CY... Oh, hell. Yeah. CYUL. Flight number... This thing so I can't see the chat for a minute. Uh, Tango Sierra Charlie 90. Alright, so our latitude is 4647.6. Longitude is 5 index today is going to be 5, as is almost always. And our flight level today is going to be at flight level 220. Grab our climb wind. Then let's get to our flight plan. Speed departure, uh, runway zero six. Okay. Well, we'll just have to input the departure ourselves. Set it. Not in database. Of course, it's not. Uh. Okay, over. Nick's gonna look bad. I don't. I don't like it. Of course, Ignick's not in the database. Oh my god! I need Navigraph so bad. Losing it making the unattached. Okay, so let's L rival point eight. Or not. We're gonna come in via Ombra six. Well, Ombra four. So this is missing. Uh, 
the works. Then we have Ombra, Okopo, Mare, Alki. It's got some stuff that this doesn't. Lovely. Okay. That's the closest we're gonna get. Okay. Back to so I can see you guys again. What? These things to an area where they're gonna be okay. Uh, okay, and it be need right, zero fuel weight is going to be 56.4 tons, 27.8 center of gravity. Block fuel is going to be 7, 4.7. What? Extra time negative. Why? No prediction. Why do you think it takes eight... eight hours? Let's look at this flight plan. Okay, that's why Ober is causing an issue. Okay, we're gonna have to try and fly this as manually as we can. Let's look back at that fuel prediction. That looks better. An extra half an hour. There we go. Initialization B performance. We're going to be picking off. Flaps two. V1 is 147. V rotate is 152. And V2 is 155. Flaps going to be 2 slash up 0.4. Flex temp is 65 degrees. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. All right. Um, progress. Let's wait go. Perfect. Now, that's our McDo. Configured. Set that one over to my flight plan. Push back and okay. Altimeter set, which we're gonna need one, two. This is Gene Lesage INTL Information Whiskey. Two 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 three zero. Visibility three zero. Temperature 27, 2.21. Wind BRB at 8. Altimeter 2965. Advise you have information that whiskey. Low and pressure. Information Holy whiskey. Crap. This is Gene Lasage INTL information whiskey. 2224 Zulu. Visibility 30. Zero. Temperature 27, 2.21. Wind BRB at 8. Altimeter to night. All right. Flight director is both on. Speed managed dashed. Heading will be soon. Any second now. Altitude we're going to set the ATC cleared today. I don't have our precise procedure, so we're just going to go up. Flight level 220. All right, IRS is aligned, heading is dashed, everything looks good, uh, anti-skid and nose wheel steering should be on, switching panel all normal, 
Transponder set squawk, we're not gonna worry about it. Beacon light on. Let's go ahead and plan our pushback. So we're gonna be taking off via runway six. Let's take a look at this map here. I'm gonna show you guys this map. I, I usually uh, just look at this on Simbreed. So, uh, or not Simbreed, uh, Sim Toolkit Pro. So we're going to need to be taxiing this way. I can look at the SIM toolkit to get the actual names of these taxis. Which, really, this map should have at all costs. So I'm going to start up. We're going to take Taxiway Delta, which becomes Taxiway Golf after we cross runway 11. We take golf all the way to runway six. So this is Delta, turns into golf here. And then we're gonna take it all the way to runway six and take off. All right, so we're gonna need to push back tail left. Get my Streamlabs back open so I can see you guys. Plugins, better push back, pre-plan push back. All right, we are ready to rock and roll. This is the this is the best we're gonna get. <laughs> I apologize once again for all the nonsense. All the nonsense was not intentional. Uh, we're just gonna do the best we can today and see where that gets us. <clears throat> but. The, the things that we need as a as, as pilots and as as a stream are they're making themselves very apparent. Uh, we need rudder pedals. We need navigraph. Um, we need active sky. <clears throat> One thing you'll notice is that uh, you get an external view. There's okay. always this haze. You see how there's this haze, especially as you get further out there? Well, it becomes a big problem at higher altitudes and on approach and things like that. The problem is, is that X-Plane reads Metar directly, right? So if I'm going to get Metar, let me, let me grab you the Metar for where we're at right now. Alright, so this is the Metar. Really? Sparking break, you got it. Um. So, what this means is the terminal area is CYQB. Uh, the time is 2822000 Zulu. Uh, our... No, it's the 28th at 2200 Zulu. Was when this was generated. Uh, the wind is 230 at 11 knots. Um, this actually is weird. It shouldn't say this. It should say 10, 10 SF. Because this is your visibility. And normally, what this means is 10 mile. Now, Metar stops reporting visibility at 10 statute miles. It just doesn't care beyond that. So here in the U.S. and, well, in, in North America, where we use statute miles, all you're going to see is this haze everywhere because X-Plane doesn't know the difference between 10 statute miles and 10 or more statute miles. It doesn't know the difference because the Metar looks exactly the same. It says that 10 SM. In this case, it's probably behaving a little differently. That's, that's why there's not quite as much haze. Because it's behaving as though there's 30. So 
go ahead and start engine one. I've been sitting there running on just engine two for a while now. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Park brake set. Stand by. All right, that's a positive start. Engine one. Engine mode back to normal. AP lead off. Brown spoilers arm. Flaps set for takeoff. Pitch trim set for takeoff. That was up 0.4. Engine wing anti ice. AP master off. We are ready for taxi. Stow is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have a set plate. He said on the right. On the left. I'm not going to be able to see you guys for a minute here. Alright, that's our pin. We are ready to go. Uh, nose wheel light to taxi. Parking brake off. Elapsed time run. Light control check full left, full right, full up, full down. FMA should be showing nav and climb. Auto brake set max. Rain on ND as required. Let's go ahead and turn it on. I'm not familiar with this sector. Check the cabin. I apologize for my phone going off. Takeoff config check. Everything looks good. Ecam no blue. Which here is what it is again. <clears throat> See you next time on another flight. What did I say? What did I say that? I apologize if it sounded like that. I, I promise. <laughs> I promise we're flying today. It may be about the only thing we're capable of doing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I gotcha. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the uh, push cart driver. Yeah, the, uh, the stupidly thick uh, French accent, which is exactly what you would find here. Don't get me wrong. Very, very thick. Although, if you ask me, not quite as much disgust as you would get in the real in real life. And normally, we would check here while we're crossing, but I don't have real-world traffic. I'm not on a network. So, there's going to be nothing here, and I'm just going to cross it. We've already eaten up enough time because of all of Twitch problems. French accent sounds more like a Russian accent. Really? I, I don't read that at all. Now, 
Now, hopefully, we don't have happen what happened to me the other day. The other day, I was making a short flight. Just to eat up a little time. And for some reason, my flight controls just got really wonky while I was trying to take off. I lost the center line on the runway. I rejected the takeoff. Man, did it absolutely ill my my time because I had to wait 45 minutes or so for my brakes to cool. That was rough. All right, we're approaching the runway here. I'm gonna go ahead and give us clearance. Runway turnoffs on, landing lights on, nose lights take off. Change our transponder to TARA mode. Lower down just a little bit. Mind you, I was listening to it while running the sewing machine. Yeah, I can understand that. Here we go. Chrono start. Advanced throttles to 50%. Stabilized. Release parking brake. Flex set. Light forward pressure. trying to vector myself a little bit. Check flaps one. And I'm going to wait until Sylvia is at 240. Check flap zero. Go ahead and turn off. Nose wheel lights. I'm 
we turn off lights. Disengage our disarm our speed brakes. Got a little bit getting a little high. Lines will be at ten thousand. So, autopilot is on. Oh. Landing lights are good for another 500 feet. 400 feet, 300 feet. All right, we are coming through. 10,000 feet landing lights off. Altimeter will go standard at 18,000 feet. Alright, last count on masks with this batch I'm just finishing, I'm at 1020. Good lord, wifey. And, uh, fun fact, so, something that's going on behind the scenes is we are actually going to have handmade masks made by, by our very own wifey. Um, that will have channel branding and everything. Um, we are doing everything we can. It should be in stock sometime around mid to late August. So sometime within about a month, I'm hoping to get them in. And then uh, we'll do some getaway giveaways. We'll do some uh, sales, hopefully. And uh, we'll see if you guys like them. So I'm, I'm probably letting the cat out of the bag a little too soon on that, but I'd rather do it too soon and have you guys excited for it than to uh, not do anything with it. And just hope that, you know, hope that you guys are still poking around and still interested in a month. But, uh, but yeah, we found a supplier that could get us the fabric, and Wifey's going to assemble them for us. Um, and then uh, we'll see what you guys like. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you'll like them. I'm sure they're going to be high quality because, you know, my wife is making them. So, uh, and, and from what I understand, very, very comfortable. Compared to, compared to mine at least, I've got a, uh, one of these medical ones. And man, let me tell you, it, it's killing my ears. It is absolutely killing filling my ears. Uh, I can put it on for probably about 20-30 minutes before it starts hurting. But uh, the ones that she's got, the the, the filtering fabric, the uh, mask itself goes a little bit farther, closer to your ears. And that helps it to be a little more relaxed. Use a double head, a double head wrap? What's a double head wrap? What makes it double? Wrap it around your head twice and then enjoy the fact that you can't breathe. Yep, we're through 18,000 feet. Let's set our barometer to standard. Oops, behind the neck and back. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 I got you, I got you. No, that makes sense. <laughs> Good fishing up there in Quebec, in, in Quebec. 
Quebec? No, he knows how to say Quebec. And this doesn't interfere with glasses so badly. This one doesn't really interfere with my glasses. It is annoying because I get the, uh, I do get, I do get my glasses steamed up a bit because of my breath. That's mostly because I am, my internal thermometer runs very, very hot. Uh, wifey can confirm this. I am just a warm human being, which is not always a good thing. Uh, not for me, anyway. Let's do a real quick flyby. Oh, look at that thing. Another thing that I'm looking into, by the way, is uh, decals. Or as some people who are less uh, interesting call them, decals. The music is a smidge louder than me. Let me turn that down a touch. But you'll have to tell me if that's okay. I should probably still a bit loud. Get inside the cockpit so I'm not hearing the screaming engines. Better much. Okay, good, 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 good. Well, yeah, the <laughs> like I said, let's get back in the cockpit because uh, trying to tell what our volume levels are, well, we've got these uh, CFM screaming in our ears. Uh, that's not going to go well. Uh, Speaking of which, the fun thing is, so this is a little bit of, of information that a lot of people don't think about or don't realize. Airbus and Boeing both use CFM 56 engines. Uh, well, the 320 Neo uses, uh, I think, Pratt and Whitney's. But um, the this this particular aircraft and the Boeing 737 both use CFM 56 engines. But they both sound very, very different. Uh, the, the, I want to say it's the Airbus has a higher pitch scream, where the Boeing sounds like a lower buzzsaw. And the reason for that is because, uh, so when... When Boeing was designing all of their next generation aircraft, they made them lower to the ground to make it easier for baggage handlers. And that was great for the baggage handlers. Unfortunately, as we've gotten to a point in aviation now, we realize that the best way to make the engines more efficient is to have bigger bypass ducts, which means a bigger outer fin, but a, low, but a smaller inner core. But the only way you can do that is by making a larger engine. Less in it, but physically larger. Well, the problem is because Boeing lowered down their aircraft, they're, they're now too close to the ground to get more bigger engines. The, the wings are just too close to the ground. The, the, the engines are already almost touching the ground. So... What they, what they have to do is they have to spin those turbines faster to get the same amount of, of air going through. But where the, uh, the Airbus CFMs, they have longer fan blades, so the tips, what you're hearing, that scream or buzzsaw, it actually has to do with the way that it's disrupting the airflow. So when the longer fan tips on the Airbus are... Uh, are spinning the tips are moving so much faster than the core that they're breaking the, the the speed of sound enough that it's causing essentially a constant uh, it's, it's causing a constant uh, sonic boom 
And that's what you're hearing. That's what that scream is, is a constant sonic boom of those fan tips uh, spinning and, and breaking the surface of the air. Oh, that looks almost perfect. We're at 239. We're supposed to be at 240. For our heading into Sylvie. It looks like I flew the, the departure properly, even though I could not program the FMS to do it. it makes me very proud of myself. So, we are going to have two flights today. I know that, that I, I, that's what I'm aiming for anyway. I mean, we, we got delayed significantly by the change in the uh, name of the stream from Arakok Attack to uh, Iraq Attack. Unfortunately, I did try to get Iraq Attack as it is at, up at the top there. Unfortunately, somebody already had that name. I don't know who. I don't know why. Well, clearly Iraq Attack has it. But uh, I don't know why, uh, and I, I didn't want to offer them money to change it, because uh, I'm heckin' broke. So instead, I chose Iraq ATK, because that's... I mean, we're all gamers here, right? We know that ATK is attack. So that's, that's the closest I could get, but it should be a lot easier to understand now. It should be a lot easier to pronounce. People shouldn't have as many problems with it. Um, and I'm hoping that it will help people recognize the brand, especially since uh, I'm getting shit printed with it on it. So uh, I'm, I'm really hoping that that works out, and I think that it will. I think that it will. I hope you guys... What the hell just happened? We are definitely in the soup. <laughs> What is going on here? Whoa, 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 whoa. Why? Why? Airplane? Airplane. I mean, we're going to have to fly it, I think. Yeah, we're gonna have to fly it because we're too high. Oh no, this isn't this isn't Canadian skies. This is something wrong with the. Uh, this is something wrong with the arrival. This is some, this is one of those things that Navigraph would fix. Having Navigraph would fix this. Um, because I wouldn't I wouldn't be using outdated. I mean, that's, that's the issue, right? Is that my flight planning software, my FMS, and my charts are all using different air act dates, right? So I can, look at my, I can look at my charts, and my charts are accurate because I'm getting them directly from Jefferson. Um, I'm not exactly paying for them, but I'm not... Like, I'm not stealing them either. Uh, I just search for them on, uh, on, on, the, on the web, and generally I can find them pretty easily. Uh, so basically what probably happened here is there were some waypoints that were in the actual uh, procedure that the Airbus just didn't have, so it skipped them. And now we have one waypoint that's over here. And it's probably intended to be like a, uh, there's probably a noise abatement procedure or something where it sends me out this way and then has me connect like that. It's probably just missing a point here. But now it's too late for me to fix. I could have skipped the waypoint and just gone direct Omber. Unfortunately, it's it's way too late for that now. So if I did that, um, we'd basically have to hit the speed brakes and just dive bomb the ground. 
and I am not prepared to do it. I'm going to let the Airbus do what it's doing. Uh, it, is, it is very smart about how to fly itself, and I appreciate that about it. Yes, that is in fact what I appreciate about it. But uh, this, this is not a real-world procedure, I guarantee it. In this condition, they would definitely send me from Sylvie to Omber, and this would just be a straight line. Um, that's exactly what they do. They'd have me leveling out here at 3.05. Or at, pardon me, 2.8, 2.80. Um, heading straight west. So this is, this is ridiculous, this is absolutely silly, but we're going to do it because it was too late for me to fix it. I should have noticed that during uh, flight planning, but I had so many other things going wrong, I did not have time to check. But yeah, we are working on a lot of solutions here. We are working on some uh, rudders, rudder pedals. We are um, hopefully going to be working on getting Navigraph soon. Um, oh, we're we're hanging a we're hanging a 170 at Albuquerque, Albuquerque. We we are turning right the hell around at Albuquerque because nobody wants to go past Albuquerque. There is nothing good past Albuquerque. <clears throat> so like everything else, if you have reached Albuquerque, you've gone too far. Turn around, go back. You've made a mistake. Okay, so we're going to be approaching it's going to be yelling at us soon we're only 50 miles but we are what? Are, are we really 313 track miles? We are! It's having us go 120 miles. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to go past this descend point. And once we pass that, we're going to bring her right down to about 3,000 feet. May not be able to totally fix it, but I'm I'm gonna do something. This this is ridiculous. Okay, so runway elevation is gonna be 118 feet. <clears throat> we definitely need to fix some of this. We're gonna get past our descent point. We're gonna turn around. We're gonna, we're gonna make a, a a left turn. Ooh, we got some wind too. Ordering headwind. So what you'll see here, uh, zoom it out a little bit, is descent point. This tells me where I'm going to descend. So I'm going to go past that. So we're going to fly about 20 miles out this way. Then I'm going to descend and turn 90 degrees left. So right now we're on, what, 305? I'm going to turn left to... Uh, one five? No. You're a one five, right? I am not doing well at this. Oh my god, no. That's 305, we're gonna go to 105. 
at 015, 105. This calculator, it is going to be the death of me. You know what? Let's go ahead. Go ahead and descend. Go from 298 to 208. We're going to go ahead and enter our oh, we would do what one two two point This is Pierre Elliott Trudeau INTL information X ray. Two three zero two Zulu. Visibility three zero. Temperature 29. Dew point 14. Line 270 at 16. Altimeter 2971. Advise you have information X ray. End of information X ray. This is Pierre Elliott Trudeau INTL information X ray. 2302 Zulu. Visibility 30. Temperature 29. Dew point one four. Line two seven zero at one six. Altimeter two nine seven one. Advise you have information X ray. End of information X ray. This is Pierre Elliott Trudeau INTL information X ray. Two three zero three Zulu. Visibility three zero. Temperature two nine. Dew point one four. Line two seven zero at one six. Altimeter two nine seven. And we'll do a loop to come down. Because that was absolutely ridiculous. I, there was no way I'm flying. Today has just been the day of screwy, and I'm okay with that. Um, you know, we're we're not going to we're going to eliminate as much screwiness as we possibly can, but there's just some things I'm not doing. Um, that was definitely screwiness. There's some things I can't fix. Um, I don't know why my Streamlabs is not connecting properly. It's it's doing enough that I'm streaming and you guys can see me, so I'm not going to mess with it. This was definitely just a little bit of a puddle jump. Vertical speed is minus 800. We're, we're doing fine. Why are we in vertical speed mode? No, I want you to fully descend. Thank you. See, that's the important. This is this is why I say when I looked at the Tolis uh, user's manual, they kept messing up whether this was the FMA or the PFD. This is the PFD. This is the FMA, and it needs to be thought of as two separate things because the FMA will always tell you what the plane is doing with itself. And I need to know that because if the plane is doing something stupid with itself, I need to be smarter than the plane. Now, granted, not very often I'm actually smarter than the plane. But, doing my best. 
Let's see if we can't find Descent Wind. We definitely can't. That's okay. We will land anyway. We need to get down to... Anything too far away. That's all right. We will make this work. Actually, uh, I'm going to go ahead and exit this hole. What are you doing? Okay, I'm going to direct... Coco. There we go. That's how you exit a hole. You don't add another, like, half a loop in there. All right. We need to be at, what, 2971. <clears throat> okay, so landing elevation auto. <clears throat> Pardon me. Arrivals complete, performance approach complete. Uh, top of descent winds have been uh, skipped because we can't do that. For whatever reason. Okay, altitude set and push, speed break half as required, altimeter set Q and H. It is done, landing lights on at 10,000 feet, we're at 14,000, we're flying for now. ND data to constraints already done, uh, LS on as required, let's go ahead and get those on because it won't hurt anything. And that's one less thing we have to do. Cell point is going to that is three thousand plus, not eight thousand. we're going to do is we are going to insert a hold at Mare. Actually, no, we're not. Because we are on our descent path. We're bang on. We're good. Progress. Critical deviation. We are under? No, we're over. Very slightly. You're fine. All right. So, after recovering from that nonsense, take a look. I'm going to look real quick at my live map. On. Uh, oh, I missed it by another couple miles. I turned too early on the Sabbath. <laughs> oh, that was ridiculous. What? What's wrong with you? Plain. We are definitely back on course. 
spot on our line. <laughs> this thing wanted to send us 120 miles out in the wrong direction. Even after all I took out, it still wanted to send me 120 miles in the wrong direction. Let's look at our fuel prediction. Yeah, now we're up to 2.9 tons on board with an hour, almost two hours of extra time. Okay, speed is in managed mode. We are under 10,000 feet. We can turn on our landing lights. And I hate this haze. This haze is so dumb. Uh, X-Plane, fix your shit, please. Or better yet, don't. You know what, we'll just wait for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 to come out and you don't have to do a thing. We'll just, we'll just fix it that way. How about that? I know, hot takes, hot takes. Get a little bit wider view. All right, yeah, 3,000 plus, we will be fine. <clears throat> if anything, we might be a little high, or a little low. We are doing just, just, just fine. Seatbelts are still on, landing lights are on. That still doesn't want me to do anything. I did forget to release the passengers at all this flight. I apologize, guys, but you're going to have to stay in your seats because everything went bad. Everything went tits up. So that's what you guys got to deal with. You're, you're just stuck in your seats the whole flight. The whole, like... 45 minute flights. I don't think that's too much to ask. 45 minutes is not long for you to sit in your chairs and shut the hell up. Oh, that reminds me. We do need to fly with, what was it? Uh, Tuli? Or, uh, Tulula. We need to fly with Tulula sometime. I, I will actually download that livery just to fly Tulula. Um, just for the memes. I will also probably at some point download a British Airways just because I want to fly a speedbird. Kulula, sorry, yeah, 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 Kulula. <clears throat> Go ahead and put auto brakes to low. Oh yeah, keep the blue side up. You gotta keep the blue side up. That's that's how you do things. Okay, so our runway length. 7,000 feet. We should have no problem stopping in that. We can stop in almost half that. Alright, so we're going to hit a decel here. And then things are going to start happening very, very quickly. We are only 15 miles out. We are almost there, folks. I'm going to try to take this thing a little bit lower before I start cutting power. Because I feel like that's what's been killing my landing range. I'm going to go down to maybe 20 or 15 before I cut power. Alright, here we go with our, with our D-cell.
Alright, 230 knots, speed checked. This flaps one. Or not speed checked. Ooh, we're fluctuating quite a bit. Alright, under 200 knot speed check, flaps two. Next checkpoint is 185. Speed checked, flaps three. And at 178, speed check, flaps full. And get our gear down and locked. Brown spoilers armed. Okay, I'm not sure why I'm not getting IRS. Turn offs on. E cam no blue. Two thousand. Okay, maybe we don't have IRS here. Very windy. But at least it's a headwind. That's going to help some. I don't know why we're moving around so much. As we cross this waypoint. Pappies don't seem right to me.
reversers deployed. All right, not bad at all. Vacate here. Whew. All right. That was not bad at all. Let's get ourselves to a stand. And then... Mm. Slow this bird down a little bit. All right, uh, let's go through our landing checklists. Landing lights are off. Ground exposure disarmed. Engine mode normal. Flaps retracted. APU master on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's start it. Rain on ND off. Brake fan, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And let's find ourselves a stand. This one right here will do just perfectly for my tastes. That should be just about right. Check. Nope. We need to go. Well, actually, that is just about right. That jetway is almost perfectly lined up. All right. So, parking brake pressure. Check green. Good enough. Uh, parking brake set. Anti-ice off. APU bleed on. Engine 1 and 2 master off. Runway, turn off lights off. Turn off our closed wheel light as well. Wing lights off. Beacon off. Navin logo off. Seat belts off. Elapsed time stop. It was 54 minutes, which is longer than it should have been. The old pumps can go off. Transponder can go to standby. McDo's dim, which I'm not going to do. Brake fans would go off, but I'm going to leave them on because we are just going to turn this puppy right back around and head back out. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw us very quickly to a Be Right Back screen while I get our second leg configured. And then we're gonna wind up going uh, heckin' long today because it's gonna be about probably an hour and a half before we land, so I'm gonna be an hour late and that's okay by me. So anyway, I'm gonna do that real quick and uh, I will be back probably in about five to 10 minutes. Thank you guys so much and I will see you then.
All right, and I'm back. Thank you guys so much for waiting. I apologize for it taking so long, but um, this isn't easy to do. <laughs> and I'm just being honest. All right, so now I need to figure out exactly what I follow and what I don't. Let's get back up to our preliminary pre-flight procedures. Um, ground power can stay disconnected. Actually, I think I do have to. No, I'll be fine. So, fuel pumps all off. A AP is still running, so our fire test is still good. We won't need to test so many things. Uh, AP master switch on, AP start on, lights and McDo's are fine. Flaps lever, matchy cam, zero. Uh, speed brake retracted, probe window heat, fine, AP on, air conditioner panel, no white, cross bleed auto, air conditioner temp as required, generator 1 and 2 fault, other lights off, all lights off, they're good, pre-flight procedures, adheres are still loaded, strobe lights are on auto, we can turn our wing and logos back on. We can turn our seat belts back on. Uh, pardon me. We need to load the damn plane. Now I lose you guys again for just a few minutes. We need 4234. I think it was 44. And then our load settings today, we have 140 passengers going on with us to Ottawa. And we have 1.5 tons of cargo. Perfect. All right, so now we can turn on our seatbelt lights now that everybody's seated. No smoking is already on, emergency exits are armed, landing elevation set auto, pack flow, we're going to go back down to normal, I think, because we're getting towards evening, fuel pumps all on, and now McDo. Fuel McDo's data, GPS monitor, initialization, going from CYUL to CYOW. Flight number is going to be, oh fuck it, Air Canada 1, 2, 3, 4, because that's just what we're doing. All right, latitude 4527.5, 7345.2, perfect. Those are still good. Cost index today, I'm going to lose you guys again. Cost index is going to be 5, as always. Our flight level is going to be 140. Grab our climb winds. And then we can go to our flight. Alright, we are departing. Let's go to flight planning page. We're leaving CYUL via 24 right. I have no idea what that is. That looks good. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually insert that, I think. Land mode. Okay, so that, that plan does almost nothing. <laughs> Enough. All right, insert, and then we're going to arrive at CYOW for runway 25. Um, we don't have a transition, so I don't know Yankee or NDB2. And by the river, two.
the YOW, I mean, that's where we're at. The River 2, no. With the Alset Transition. Go to Jessica. Move this manual. No, we're not going to remove the manual. We're going to leave that discontinuity because we want that discontinuity because we are going to do some weird vectoring of ourselves. This one between Keska and Owls. Ah, 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 ah. Don't argue with me, plane. There we go. Cool. Perfect. We will go to I'll set exactly when I want. Perfect. Alright, go to initialization B. We don't need you anymore. Alright, Solus, ISCS. We need initialization B. Our zero fuel weight is going to be 56.3 tons with 27.9% zero fuel weight center of gravity. We have 44. Go with 4.6. I'm going to bump this up. Okay, that gives us 2.3 hours extra time. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. Performance. We'll be taking off using flaps 2. V1 is 1.5. One, 1. V2 is also 1.5. Or V rotate is 1.5. 1. 1. V2 is 1.5. 3. Flaps are 2 slash up 0 0.4 and 65 degrees flex temp. Don't need you anymore. Alright, perfect. So let's get this bird in the air, shall we? That's our McDo's configured. Let's go on to our pushback and start. So we are needing to go 2-6 right. We're going to taxi basically straight out left. Here in Montreal. Okay, we are parked in a really weird place. Um, we are taking off, what, 2-4? Or right. Okay, so basically, we just need to come back, tail left, and then... Wait, is that your icon? I don't know the name of the taxiway, but I know the way I need to go. Perfect. All right, so let's start planning our pushback. We'll come straight back. All right. Run to cockpit. All right, Brother so altimeter should be still set. Flight directors both on. I'm going to turn off our planning systems. Uh, speed dashed, heading dashed. We're going to set our cruise flight level. Be 
140. Anti-skid and nose wheel steering should still be on. Switching panel, all normal. Transponder, set squawk, we're not gonna worry about it. Beacon on. And then we should be ready for pushback. Pushback, start pushback. Alright. Now I can see you guys again. I apologize for how much time I'm spending not able to see you. Unfortunately, that's just the nature of the beast right now because none of my devices are able to connect to Twitch properly. So that's just what we do. It's the best I got. <clears throat> Alright. So let's get this plane rolling. Switch this back into arc mode. Okay, go ahead. Didn't need my permission. I mean, I guess they actually do need my permission. All right, so what's our brakes look like? 140? Turn off the brake fan. Stow connected on bypass pin inserted. Really parking brake. All right, parking brake released. Starting pushback and you may start engines. All right, ignition mode starting engine two. We'll look for 22-ish percent here on N2 rotation. And it'll introduce fuel. Positive start, engine two. I'm gonna go ahead and kick on engine one so I don't wait until we're already pushed back like the last time. Again, waiting for 22% into rotation. And fuel flows on. Positive start, engine two, engine mode back to normal. APU bleed off. Round spoilers armed. Flap set for takeoff. Pitch trim set for takeoff. That's gonna be down or up 0.4. Engine wing anti-ice as required. APU master off. We are ready for our taxi checklist. Go ahead and get this second flight started. I'm going to lose you guys again while I taxi. Set parking brake. Set parking brake. Disconnecting tow, standby. Sim Toolkit Pro. Stow is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the right. We'll see you next time on other side flight. And signal is on the right.
No! In Toolkit Pro, why? Why is it's crashed? Come on, come on. Let's go on. Alright, here we go. Now! We're in taxi, okay. Taxi lights on. Parking brake off. Light controls check full left, full right, full up, full down. Elapsed time run. FMA, nav and climb, auto brake set max, cabin calls, takeoff config check, ecam no blue, try and taxi just a little bit faster than I usually like to. We're still going to keep it under 30. People driving on the apron really need to be more careful. Turn on the alpha here. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and just cross the runway. Once again, we have no real world traffic. I'm not going to really worry about it. Not in this case when we're already so late taking off. Uh, legitimately, I could cut the stream right now. I normally go until 7. But I want to make sure I get this second flight in. I promised it, therefore you're going to get it. We're definitely doing something of a Ryanair taxi. Maybe a Delta? Yeah, this is more a Delta taxi. We have a hell of a taxi here. I could probably take off on this damn taxiway. Just being honest. We should probably be good for me to switch back to where I can see you guys. Hello, everybody! Sorry for uh, having to ignore you for a little bit, but navigation is not easy when um, 
I don't have proper charts. I don't have my ability to, to look at things when not looking at them on my other monitor. It's just it's just one of them days, guys. You know what? That's okay. We're going to get through it. We're going to be fine. Speed it up just a little bit. I'm going to get us up a little closer to 30 knots. Looks like we're almost there. And I am so ready for us to be there and get this bird taking off. We're going to have a fun flight, guys. And it's going to be a short one, too. And I'm expecting, maybe, we might see a little dusk time, dusk, dusk time landing. Maybe. down a little bit. We give ourselves the absolute maximum amount of runway that we can. I feel like that's not actually paved, and somehow developers put the wrong terrain type underneath. Alright, transponder to TARA. TARA. Lights on. All right, here we go. Chrono on. Throttle to fifty percent. Stabilize. No surges. Release. Flex set. Board pressure. Positive rate, gear up. Checked, collapse one.
turn off our nose wheel lights and runway turn offs. Disarm our speed brakes. Autopilot, and we're going to go ahead and direct Pesca. Speed checked, flaps clean. All right, so ground spoiler disarm, nose wheel lights off, runway turn off lights off. Autopilot one is on, throttle to the climb to tent. Flaps are retracted. Engine mode is normal. Engine anti-ice is not required. Landing lights retracted at 10,000 feet. Altimeter to standard once we cross 18,000, which we will not on this flight. We are only crossing to 14,000. But 10,000, I'm going to retract our landing lights and let our passengers go as long as the weather holds. We are safely back in the air, folks. Very happy about that. We are well on our way. What is our estimated time on route here? About 16 minutes. This is going to be a real short flight, folks. These are really just puddle jumps. Oh, the beautiful cloud break. Look at her screaming. Absolutely beautiful. All right, we are almost 10,000 feet where we'll get to release the passengers, turn off our landing lights, and just enjoy a little bit of a cruise. I think we're about 10 miles to our top of climb. And then we'll... <laughs> we'll have about a 10-mile cruise. Through 10,000 feet, landing lights coming off. Seatbelt lights coming off. You are free to move about the cabin. So hopefully we will get in here probably about 7.30 my time. It's 7 o'clock here right now, which makes it midnight UTC. So hopefully we will get in about, uh, about midnight 01 UTC. Or midnight 30, it's midnight 01 already. Um, Alright, out hold at 14,000. Why are you already saying out star? Plane. Oh. Better level off. You're still doing 30 feet per minute, or 2,300 feet per minute. Better knock it the hell off. Lane knows what it's doing. I should just trust it. Absolutely gorgeous. It'd be even more gorgeous if it wasn't so hazy. But X plane be X plane. X plane, X plane Y. That puts us cruising for about, what, 10 miles? Yep, 
Yep, about 10 miles. Now. <laughs> And then we'll be back to descending inter destination data. This IS McDonald Cartier INTL information alpha 0003 Zulu. Visibility 15. Temperature 29. Dew point 12. Line 260 and 12. Altimeter 2973. Advise you have information alpha. End of information alpha. This IS McDonald Cartier INTL Information Alpha. All right, Information Alpha. Let's go ahead and go down to about 3,000. We're already back on our descent phase. Such a short cruise, folks. But it's there. We're going to do this. All right, landing elevation set auto. McDo arrivals completed, performance approach completed, top of descent winds, that's a very good point. Probably should have done that already. Probably won't let me. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Alright, uh, FCU altitude, set and push, speed break half as required, not required, altimeter set Q&H, that was, what the hell was that, Q9er Landing lights on when we cross 10,000 feet. I'm also going to turn the uh, seatbelt lights back on about the same time. Canada is absolutely beautiful, by the way. And I cannot wait to see this in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Um, I will be getting that. I don't know which version I'm going to be getting, and I don't know when I'm going to get it. Those are the sad truths. But I will be getting it simply for what it is. Um, what will determine which version I get is whether or not the planes are steady level. I don't anticipate that they will be. Um, I have seen the list of sceneries that they offer. And while they would be nice, they are not frequently things that we fly. So um, I'm not particularly swayed by the airports that they offer. I, if, if the airplanes are study level, then the Dreamliner in the Ultimate Package would be worth it to me. Possibly. Um, aside that, the basic version has the A320, and uh, Boeing 747, I think? Constraints are on, airports are on. We're about to cross 10,000 feet. Landing lights coming on. Seat belts, please. Ladies and gentlemen, please sit down. Sit your asses down. And stay seated while we land this plane. It's gonna take a little bit. We are descending very, very slowly. Some might say we're not even descending at all. Those people, well, they'd basically currently be right. It looks like we got a wicked headwind. 24 knots of headwind. At least it's a straight headwind right now. Mm 
now we're descending in proper again. I don't know why it decided to hang us up there at 10,000. Speed limits below 10,000 is 250 knots, not 240, so it wasn't hanging up for that. We are on our descent path. We're doing just fine. Let's let's get a little more range out of our instruments. Oh yeah, this is gonna happen real fast. Go ahead and go down to 2,000. There's probably gonna be constraints. Yeah, there's a constraint at, at 3,000. <clears throat> I'm surprised we're as close as we are, actually. Uh, the, the flight connections said that this was an hour and three minute flight, thinking maybe they mean block time? from departure to arrival rather than uh, you know from, uh, from take off to landing they're probably accounting for a lot of taxi time too but Ottawa should be a nice big airport X-Plane, we've, we've got to discuss this. It looks like it's raining outside, but I'm basically in cavalcade conditions. And there's no way I should not be seeing the ground. I'm, I'm at 6,000 feet, and I can barely see the ground. My guy. Let me let me pop this up. I'm not gonna be able to see you guys here for just a minute. Go to our flight summary and look at our Metar. I think we've got some clouds. Okay, this this might be somewhat legitimate. Not actually legitimate because I should have 15 mile visibility. And I definitely Okay, so we're on descent, on approach. See your speed managed. Speed brake has required. Uh, flaps one at 230 knots. Go ahead and turn on our landing systems. Hopefully we'll get something here. If not, we will just land it totally visual again. I have no problems with that, folks. I have no problems landing visual. I, I actually feel a lot better having had the experience of that last flight. I feel a lot more confident in my own flying skills. I'm going to hit a decel here soon, and we're going to have to start putting in flaps. Like, there's our airport. where we're going to be landing. What's that over there? We've got a lot of lights off in the water, my dude. What is going on? Alright, here comes the D-cell. 
We're going to drop airspeed like a stone. Here we go. Altitude constraint star. All right, 230 knots, speed checked, flaps one. Definitely not getting an ILS signal. That's fine. We will just do straight up visual. That's I'm totally okay with this. Okay, and then we're going to start descending again. As soon as we cross Tefli. On final approach. Under 200 knots, flaps to under 185, flaps 3. 2,500. Go ahead and gear down. I'm going to put medium brakes on. Ground spoilers armed. He checked, flaps full. Okay, we're definitely not aligned here. Slide to the right a little here. up just a bit. into it. Okay. Much better.
reversers. Those down. Or reverse. Eight knots, the reversers. Alright, and manual braking. Guys! Welcome to Ottawa. Go ahead and turn off right here. I think, yeah, there's our stands. Two for two good ones. You are not kidding. I am so glad you've done so well today. And you know what? I could not have done it without you guys. Thank you guys so, so much. All right. Go ahead and get our APU. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We want to turn our taxi light on and turn our runway turnoffs off. Top subtracted, AP master start, brake fan on. We've got some really, really spicy brakes. Hey, I think we're going to turn right in here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ottawa. I believe this is the capital of Nadia. That should be us. Let's see here. Once again, lined right up with that jetway. Uh, it's not the proper marking, but I'm okay with that if I'm lined up with the jetway. That is absolutely fantastic. Okay. Uh, park brake on, anti-ice off, APU bleed set on, Engine 1 and 2 master off, runway turnoffs are already off, wing lights off, nav and logo lights off, uh, beacon off, then we're going to turn off our seat belts, lapse time stop. Thirty-three minutes block time. That is not bad, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and close this out on M Toolkit. Shutdown fuel is at thirty-four hundred kilograms exactly. I'm very surprised that Ottawa does not have ILS. Uh, or maybe I just didn't have it tuned properly. That's possible. All right, so continue with our shutdown. Uh, seat belts off, lap time stop. Fuel pumps all off. Transponder to standby. McDo's dim. We are going to actually shut the plane down this time. Brake fan off. Even though our brakes are hella hot. Doesn't matter because we're shutting it down for the day. And securing the aircraft. Park brake check on. Adhere's off. 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 APU bleed off. 
AP master off. Emergency exit lights off. And no smoking off. Battery one and two off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ottawa. We are here. We are safe. We landed. And it was a beautiful landing. Too. Let's pause that. Looks like 240. That's a bit high of a landing. I, I would have liked something a little lower, but that was beautiful compared to my average. I had two good landings. Um, not great, but good. Um, and we're only a half an hour over. Thank you guys so much for being here. I will be back tomorrow, things permitting. I will be back tomorrow for some Trials of Mana. And then again Friday for the same thing. Tomorrow will be the same hours as today. And Friday will be from 2 to 4 Central Time. You'll see the time conversion down below my stream as soon as I go uh, offline. Thank you guys for being here. I hope you've enjoyed the flights. I hope you've enjoyed me panicking both about the stream and about not having ILS. But uh, those are some beautiful landings, guys. I hope you guys had fun. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.